separate shear on that. Separate shear on that, yeah. Good morning. Welcome to today's stuff is that Kuf Yud in Ksubis, as we learned for Fushlim for Lazar Ben Ruma. We're at the second mission on the Kuf Yud Amaralik, which is the last halacha of Admo. Remember, we said that, uh, Allah, uh, uh, that Hanan had two halachas and we paskin like both of them. Then we said that there are seven halachas that Admon said, but Rumi only paskins like the first three, not like the last four. This is the last of the four, meaning the last of all seven, that the halacha is uh, that, that Admon that Admon said, but we don't paskin like him. Here you don't find the last four that we saw, two of them yesterday, or how many did we see yesterday? We had one. Uh, two, yeah, two yesterday on yesterday's daf. We had two on the previous day's daf uh, that um, where Ramulio said that was number two and number three were, uh, were, that the halach is like. Ramulio said, I, I agree with him. And then uh, and then actually we had three on yesterday's daf. The third of Admon's that we went like Admon is the top of Kuftes. And then we had two more, uh, which is number four, number five. And then it's number six and number seven on this daf. We saw number six at the top of this page. And these last four do not, the halach is not like Abba. So here is the second Mishnah on Kuf Yuban Alp, where we're starting today. Shnaim Shotz Yushtachov Zeh Al Zeh. Ruvain says to Shimon, you owe me $100. Here's an IOU. Shimon says to Ruvain, you owe me $100. Here's an IOU. So what do you do in a case like that? So in America, you'd say, contra, right? IOU and you owe me, forget about it. So Admon says, wait a minute, wait a minute. The second guy, Shimon, Ruvain's got a thing, IOU, Shimon, Shimon owes me $100. Shimon says, I have a later document which says, you owe me $100, and I can't owe you $100, because if I owe you $100, why would you, uh, why would you borrow from me $100, right? If I owed it to you, you would just take back what I owe you. If I owe you, if your first document is correct, Shimon says to Ruben, if I, if I really owed you the $100, why did you borrow $100 from me? You should have just demanded that that's your money back. And th that's what Adam says, Admon, how did you borrow from me? That's Admon's argument. And, and he's, Adman says basically that Shimon could say, I don't owe you anything. I must have uh, paid you back because why would you have borrowed money from me? The Chamar knows, so each one collects his own. There's the, they're both valid. Now, <laughs> what's going on? We don't pass him like Adman, so we go like the Chachamim. Now, let's understand. It might, says the Gemara. We haven't really understand the mission yet. Each one, Reuben and Shimon each say, here's an IOU, you owe me money. Rav Nachman goes seemingly like the rabbis, like the Chum and the Mishnah. <coughs> Each one collects his own. Rav Sheisha Manoah, Fuchay Metar Salomali. What do they have to exchange? It's like exchanging bags or exchanging uh, uh, <coughs> like leather cover, covers, uh, you know, like a, a, a big march of like a mat, a big mat or a big, a, big, a big bag, a big leather bag. What's the point? In other words, if, if a guy's holding two big bags or an animal's holding it, if I'm holding two big bags, what's the point of exchanging from one from one and arm to the other, they both weigh the exact same thing. What's the point of exchanging over here? Each guy keeps his own, and that's it. You'd say, if I owe you 100, you owe me 100. Each guy keeps his own. That's what Shesha says. Now, <clears throat> that doesn't seem to be what the Mishnah said. The Mishnah said each guy collects, right, according to the Chacham. We're going to deal with Chacham. So let's understand. The Kuli Alma, everybody agrees. When it comes to a creditor and a debtor, Remember, if I damage you, I have to pay of Sadeh or of Karma Yishalem, says the Pasik, Michael and Mishpatim, right? But when it comes to a creditor and a debtor, a creditor can only collect, he can't collect the best of the guy's land. He can only collect less than the best. So let's say they each have the same kind of land. The Kuliyama, Edis, 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 If each one has the same kind of land, each one has good land, each one has middle land, each one has bad land, What's the point? Everybody agrees. It's definitely, if here, now he, you see in this machlokas here between Rav Nachman and Rav we're talking about a regular case. You, I owe you, you owe me, right? When we, you know, if, if we each owe each other the same amount and the kind of land that we can collect from each other is the same, there's no point, right? Just contra it and then each guy stands on his own ground and nobody pays anybody. this like the Let's say one guy has better land. He has average land. Let's call that Bainanus. And one guy's got worse kind of land. But Nachman says, when you collect, right, zet gova, zet gova, he says, whatever Nachman said, Nachman says, no, each guy collects, seemingly like the Mishnah, like the Chachamim, each guy collects cover, when you figure out that you can't collect the guy's best, you collect less than the best, best what? Is that a, uh, a general statement about the, the best land? It's, it's a, um, it, it's, you know, everybody, all land is is estimated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's good land, pardon? 
grade A, grade A, grade, let's say grade A, B, and C, right? So you talk about in general, or you talk about this guy's land. In other words, my best land may be your worst land, right? So Rav Nachman says, no, each guy, you have to go by his own estimate. Ben others by, you measure the grade A, grade B is, his, is individualized. It's personal to this guy. It's not a general thing. It's not objective. It's subjective. Look, look at it that way. It's subjective according to this person. So now let's look at it this way. Shaman is a uh, uh, shaman. So Asibal <clears throat> was the guy who has bad land. Like, let's call it Ziburus. Let's call it uh, C, right? A, B, and C. So one guy has B land, one guy has C land. The guy who has the C land will come, the governor of so let's say he collects first from the other guy who's Bainanus, right? The best land. Now, now, now this guy, the, we'll call him number one. Number one collected Bainanus, right? Because the other guy, that's all he had is Bainanus. The other guy has B land. This guy only has C land. So the guy with C land collects the B land, the Gavi Le the Havi Gavaitis. Now, the guy who collected it, like number one, who had Ziburus, he had, he, I'm sorry, he's, what did I say? He said, the, the one guy had B land, one guy had C land. The guy who had C land, the worst kind, come and collected the Bainanus, right, from the other guy, B land. Now, to him, the Havi Gavaitis, but to him, that's the best land now. This guy now, who had the worst of C, he collected B, but, it's really like a land because you were measuring it according to him subjectively, not according to uh, objective means. Now, who now the other guy who had originally the B land, he, what is he going to collect? He's going to collect from the first guy, who, the first guy who collected. But what he's going to collect, he can only get the C land. Why? Because when a uh, when you collect from a uh, uh, from a debtor, when a credit card, something, if he has two different kinds of land, you have to collect the worst one. So now the guy who the guy who had the worst land got the better land originally. He had C land, he got B land, right? He got B land. Now when the when the guy who had B land collects, he can only collect the C land because he's collecting the worst land. The value, the value of the land. Right, right. The value of land could be the career could be the same, but still you want the best land. You still you want the best land, right? You're right. You know, it's probably less. It's a less square feet land, but that's that's how it works. So call so if the she, guy goes first. Oh, uh, 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 good, 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 very good. Begavelaitis. I think Mark's gonna ask that. Good, good, good. You're getting it right, right? So Begavelaitis, that Begavelaitis. So now, <clears throat> so Vasahu Bishakul Zaburis. Now the the second guy who's collecting is gonna get the worst line because he started with Bainanis and now he's gonna wind up with Ziburis. So there it makes a difference. If they both have the same kind of land, you're right. Then just you know contra it and there's no point in collecting at all. But maybe this will make a difference. If one guy had Bainanis, one guy had Ziburis. And the guy who Ziburus collected first, he takes Bainanus, and now he has Bainanus and Ziburus. When the other guy collects from him, he's only going to get Ziburus. But why? Because you collect based not on an objective way of Bainanus and Ziburus, you collect what this guy has. Now, this guy, the first guy who collected, has Ziburus and Bainanus, so the Bainanus is his best land, and the other guy can only get Ziburus. So the guy who had started with Bainanus winds up with Ziburus. There's no point in, in, in exchanging. Why? Because no, you don't look at it that way. Look at it, Bainanus is Bainanus objectively, and Ziburus is Ziburus objectively. So therefore, when the second guy is going to come back and collect, he's not going to collect the Ziburus, which is the worst land. He's going to collect Bainanus, which is objectively Bainanus. He's going to get his own land back, so there's no point in doing it. The guy from Ziburus is going to collect the Bainanus, and the guy from Bainanus is going to collect the Bainanus back. So 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 kiyasu hahu bainanis. Now Shekashok is going to come back and take his own best because he doesn't have to take. When we say you collect bainanis, you can't take the best. Not it's not uh, uh, subjectively. It's subjectively. This is the same bainanis. That's how that's how Shekashok will, will learn. So the more of Nachman. So Michael's question of Nachman. Michael says to us, "Ibal ziburis bresha." That only works. Part of Nachman. Oh, that's why you have to make a collection, right? You each have to collect because they're going to wind up with different amounts with different land. Why do you say the Balzaburus collects first, right? My close to Dossi Balzibur Bresha, Lessi Balbanus Bresha. Let the Balbanus come and collect first Ziburus, right? From the bad guy, the guy who had the worst land. And then when the Ziburus guy comes to collect back, he'll still get his Ziburus back. It'll still be the same thing. The Ligbe Ziburus, for the Hara Ligbe Nile, the Bainanus guy will collect Ziburus because that's all the other guy has. And when the Ziburus guy who started with Ziburus collects, he can only take Ziburus back. So why not the same thing? So let's read The Gotham Tabe. Well, it's working. It's speaking about a case where the guy with Ziburus uh, collected first. So, 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 when they come to collect, they're collecting, they, be, they each have IOUs on the other guy, right? So, when they come to collect, they come to collect together. So, why does this guy go first? Here's what happened. 
This will only work out in the following case. One guy has Edis and Bainus. One guy has Edis and Bainus. And as he has the best, right, A and B. The Islay Lechazif, the other guy has Ivoris. Mar Savar, okay. Again, Rav Nachman says what? That you do you do collect from another Bishaloin Shaman. Again, you judge based on his own subjectively, right? So one guy had Edis and Bainus, the other guy has Ivoris, right? And therefore, when the Ziburus guy collects, He's going to collect the Bainanis, but when the Edis guy, the guy who has Edis and Bainanis, collect back, he's only going to get the Ziboris. So the guy who started with Edis and Bainanis is going to wind up with some Ziboris, and the guy who started with Ziboris is going to wind up with Bainanis. So there, there is a difference. Umar Safa, Bishal, Karm, Shaman, no, it doesn't make any difference because since we look at it objectively, Edis, Bainanis, and Ziboris is not my best or my worst or my middle. It's objective. So if the Ziburus guy collects first and he's going to take the Bainanus, the guy who had started with Edis Menace is also going to collect his Bainanus back. It's going to wind up the same thing. And therefore, so that's how you could say the Machlokas is between Rav Nachman and Rav Sheish is in this case. Okay. What about our Mishnah? We said we don't go like Admar and our Mishnah, right? Rav Lezer doesn't pass, uh, Rav Mulil doesn't pass like uh, Admar over here. Our Mishnah says, Tanan, the Chomom, Rav Zegov, Rav Zegov, they each collect. Well, that, that's what Rav Nachman says, right? Zegov, Rav Zegov. I have an IOU, you have an IOU, we each collect. Right. And Admon had said, well, the second guy, the guy who had the later document could say, why should I pay you? Obviously, I must have paid you already, because if I owed you the money, why would you come and borrow from me? If I lent you $100, right? And, and now, why would I borrow $100 from you? If you give me $100, I would just take that back as my loan. So therefore, the, guy, the second guy, the guy I wrote to, can easily have that. That's what Admon says. The say, no, each guy collects. Let's, uh, let's understand what's the case. The Chum is as I go, as I go, but... Well, what does Rav Sheshis do with that? Rav Sheshis just said, but if you know not Rav Sheshis said, in a case like this, where each guy pulls out an IOU and the other guy, what's the rule? Rav Sheshis says, no, there's no point in exchanging the money. It's like it's like we're exchanging checks for nothing, right? Uh, why should I give you a hundred a hundred dollar check and you give me a hundred dollar check? Forget about it. We'll contract and call it quits, right? So why did the Chum say they each collect? According to Rav Sheshis, Tagmar of Nachman of Sheshis, Rav Nachman himself, who argued Rav Sheshis explains, I'll tell you how Rav Sheshis is explaining the case. They're not equal IOUs. One guy's IOU was a 10 year deal. I'll give you $100 for 10 years. The other guy was only for five years. Now we understand. So, was, hey, for dummy, which one was first? Elay Marisha and Esser, if Ruben lent Shimon $100 for 10 years, Vishani Lachamesh, and then Shimon lent, lent $100 back to uh, Ruvain for five years, right? For five years, meaning, meaning, in, even, in, in other words, the second guy mm-hmm. came to him, let's say, after a year and borrowed for five years. Okay, so what, what, what would Admon say over there? What do we say our mission says? Admon says that Shimon could say to Ruvain, what do you mean I owe you money? If I owe you money, why did you borrow money from me? Why don't you just take your money back? Mm-hmm. Ah, but now we're talking where they're not equal. What The first guy landed for 10 years. The second guy came later and he borrowed for five years. Right, so let's understand what's the case. The first guy, Ruben lent Shimon $100 for 10 years. And then a year later, Shimon lent Ruben for five years. What Admon say in this case, Had I been chayef to you, Kate said, I told many. And I have, remember, we said, Shimon says to Ruben, if I, was, if I owed you money, why did you borrow money from me? That doesn't make sense in this case. In other words, Shimon didn't owe him the money. Shimon had a 10-year deal, right? So when Reuben came to him after and says, listen, you know, I lent you a lot of money. Can you lend me back the $100 now? How could Shimon say to him, uh, how could Shimon say to him when the, the document is a year later for five years, how could Shimon say now when the guy's coming to collect, oh, ha- what do you mean? Uh, how could you demand money from me? The 10-year loan, the original loan, had I owed you the money, how did you borrow from me money a year later? Yeah, if I owed you the money, the answer is very simple because I didn't owe you the money for 10 years. How could I, how could he make an exam? How could Adlon say, oh, the, the second guy could say, how could I be high of you for that first loan, right? The guy who, had, who gave the second loan, how could I be high of you? If, if I would have owed you money, uh, you should have just collected that. Why did you borrow money from me? But he can't say that now because he, the money that he owed him wasn't due for another few years. Ella might be the other way around. So Adlan couldn't have said his argument there in our Mishnah. What happened was that the first one, Reuven lent Shimon money for five years, and Shane Eliezer, and the Shimon lent money to Reuven for 10 years later on. He lent him for 10 years. Again, Hechidami, either Mata Zimne. Well, wait a minute. If the time had come already, in other words, if when, when uh, Shimon 
uh, lent him the money. The five years had come up already. Why did the Rabbanan say over here, Zegova, Zegova? Admon has a good argument. Admon has a good argument. If the money I owed you was due, when you, when you came to borrow money from me, why did you borrow money from me? Why didn't you just take your money? Why didn't you just claim your money? Huh? No, no, no. He had five years the other way around. The first one was five years, and then the second one was 10 years. So that's the question, right? The second one was 10 years. When the Malva came to, when, again, when Ruvain, who originally lent money for five years to Shimon, and now, now Ruben himself ran out of money. So he comes to Shimon to borrow his money. If the five years was due already, why would he borrow money from Shimon? Just pay me back my money. So it doesn't make sense to say, so Admon has a good argument. My time at why did Rabban and say that you know, each guy collects? The second guy has a good argument. Of course I paid you back, because otherwise, why would you, uh, I paid you back already. Otherwise, why would you borrow money from me? Be the loma, if the time hasn't come yet, my time nama. Again, if the five years hasn't come up yet, so what does Admon say? Had I owed you the money, I would have paid you back. What do you mean? The five years hasn't happened yet. The first deal was five years. The second year was, was 10 years. But when did the second 10 years start? When did it start? If if uh, if if it, if it, if, he, if Ruben borrowed, if they came to him after two or three years and said, I need to borrow hundred dollars. And that's when, how could Shimon argue now and say, I can't owe you the first money because otherwise you would have just collected that when it was due, but it wasn't due yet. It wasn't five years. Five years wasn't up. My time and Admo. Why would Admo say it's Lot Shrikha? Thus, he came that the the, uh, the Ruben came to Shimon after he had lent the money for five years. He came to Shimon on the last day, the last day of the loan. In other words, the, the, the next morning the money was due. The five years was up on that day. Mar Saber, Mar Saber, Abedinish, the Yosef Yume. The Chum say, yeah, he could have borrowed, he might have borrowed the money for one day. He, yeah, he only needed it for one day. Wait till tomorrow and you'll collect the money from Shimon. Why is Ruben going to borrow money from Shimon? Last night? I needed the money today. There was a deal. There was a stock. I could have bought a stock. I could have bet on the horses, whatever. I needed the money. Oh, but it's just sometimes you borrow money for a day. Therefore, it's a valid argument. Each guy has to collect. Admon's argument that had, had I owed you the money, you, you should have collected already. No, the money wasn't due yet. Well, Admon says the guy's not going to borrow money for one day, and therefore it's a good argument when he said, "Had I owed you the money, you should have waited the day and collected the money there." That's the, that's how he's going to learn the mission. Ram Racham learns a different uh, mission, a, a simple answer to give an answer of Sheshis. Where one of them was Yisomim. In other words, the father had died. Right? There were there were two IOUs, Ruben and Shim. Let's say Ruben died. Now Ruben's kids were coming to collect the money. Right? Ram Racham Ram Racham the Asmi Migbuk. They can collect, but you can't collect from them. If they don't have karka, you can't collect their metalkin. So that's what happened over here. You couldn't collect. Uh, you can't collect from them. So therefore, that's why uh, one guy can't collect. Because you can't say, oh, uh, why didn't you collect from the answers? He couldn't collect. He couldn't collect because uh, they, they were, they were, he couldn't collect from Yisomim. But it says each one collects. The answer is no. Zegovo, zegovo, zegovo. It doesn't mean literally they each collect. It means one's worthy of collecting, but he couldn't collect because couldn't collect from Yisomim. You can't go after the metal from Yisomim. Veimlo, zegovo, zegovo, zegovo. You can't collect from him. He doesn't have any karko. Amar Rav Shei Shuvas Bedav Chada, the zegovo, zegovo, Tani. That doesn't make sense. This answer you get because it says they, they each collect. Not one could have collected, but he you can't collect from because he's Yisomim. But oh, likvino la arali asme. Learn the other way around. Let the Yisomim collect the karko. From the, the other way, you write each one collect karka, the latter of the and then let the other guys collect from the Yisomim. In other words, you can't collect metavlin from Yisomim, but you can collect karka. So let the Yisomim collect first, because they can collect, right? So like the karka. And once they have the karka, the other guy can go again, collect his ayu back. Yisomim should go with karka, but it's a bit in the whole closet goes ahead. Yisomim will collect karka because their, fa- they, their father uh, uh, inherited to them. An IOU, and they collected the karka. Now the Balchov, their creditor, can go back and collect from them. So therefore, that's a problem. So how could you say that you know one what they don't really each collect ones you some ones not you can still work it out this way. So that's a kasha. This list answer is not so good. Look at the islu the asmi ziburis. Well, maybe it's this. Maybe they do have land, but they have the worst kind of land. Islu the day idis or bainus or versus the other guy has uh, bainus. In other words, one guy has ziburis and one guy has bainus. Does the Asma go best? The Yisom will collect the Bainus. Umigla is the worst. Now, only if to pay the worst. Even if you say that you assess them, you assess them by objectively, and therefore 
uh, they have uh, they have ziburis and real ziburis and and bainerness. In other words, if they collect bainerness, it's real bainerness, and you can collect bainerness from them. Ha'ina from yisum of ziburis. There's a special rule. Even if you say that you go objectively in determining whether it's uh, the, whether the kind of land is A, B, or C, but when it comes to yisomim, you can only collect ziburis from them. So so why don't you give that answer? And then they could collect. So this isn't going to work. It says, That's only if you didn't grab from them, if you didn't seize it. The toughest, toughest, but if you seize it from them, in other words, the rule is you can only collect you saw them ziburis. But if somebody seized uh, uh, a bainus from them, then it could, then it could, uh, they they could seize it. So this is not a good answer either. So the second answer, Omar Chom, about these some doesn't work as well as the first answer, even though the first answer is also a little bit of a dochah coin of Sheshis, you got to say it's speaking about where the first guy lent him Reuben, lent money to Shimon for five years. And then the second one where Shimon lent money to Reuben is on the last day of the five years, right? Right before the money was due in the following day. So it's a little bit of a dochah. In any case, we have this uh, this machlokas here between Adman and the Chachamim, Zegov and Shachov, Zegov and But everybody agrees, even in the Mishnah, I mean, the Gemara said that Rav Nachman and Rav Sheshis both say that if each of them have the same thing, like let's say you're talking cash, you know, that we're, we're talking cash and you're going to pay one another, if I owe you 100 and you owe me 100, we could just conjure it and cancel it, etc. Okay. Shalashan Ratzelun Asun. Now we're finished with Admon and uh, with Hanan Admon. And this is like the uh, last part of the, there's two more Mishnais, but related to uh, to uh, marriage. Shalashan Ratzelun, there's three parts of Eretz Yisrael. For considered for marriage. What do I mean? Yude, Varyarda, and Galil. Interesting. We think of Yehuda and the Galil, Yehuda and Shamron today, and the Galil, and the, you know, all of Eretz Yisrael. Here he says, Avaryarda, and Rashi says, Avaryarda, and Shalosh Arches, Hain, the Eretz Yisrael. There's a Shiloh about that. Is, is Avaryarda the part where the Golan is, or over the Jordan, you know, on the, on the, on the eastern side, northeast of the Jordan? Is that Eretz Yisrael, or is it just where the two and a half tribes were allowed to live? There's a Shalom um, Shalom. Here Rashi says very clearly, Shalosh Arches Hain Bit Eretz Israel. Eretz Israel has all these three lands. Now, what do we mean by that? Normally, you can't, let's say, let's say the husband wants to live in a different area than the wife, right? From one land into another. Now, let's say they're in Iber Yarden. He wants to move to Galil. Right, you can't make them. You can't force her to move it, or she can't force him to move from one city to another city in two different lands of the three lands, or from a, a t- an ear is like a town. The Makrachakach is a large city. Avabaosa Aretz, but in the same land, meaning of the three lands, either Yehuda, Biyat, or Galil, you could force Motim You could force. Let's say he wants to move in the Galil from one city to another. He can force her to move, and she could force him to move if necessary. So. If a husband wants to move uh, and uh, he wants to take her, let's say, Shalom Rashi says, in the Surah Isha, he can't force her, but if he wants to force her to move to another city within the same land, he could do that. From a town to a town and from a city, large city to a large city. You can't force her to move even in the same land, right? from a town to a big city. Big city, some people don't like the big, big city life, right? Or from a big city to a town. You lose living in a city, you don't have to, you can't from some town, right? You can move from you can move from a nice area, right? From a pleasant area, from a worse area, let's say from an unpleasant area in Nevea Ayafa to a pleasant area, you could for you could that you could you could force her to do. If living in a nice area, you can't force them to move to a bad area. Shingmalil says, Aflam in you can't even move force them to move from a bad area to a good area, or from let's say unpleasant to pleasant. Because even the good area. Bode tests the body. We'll see what that means. As you move to a nice area, they got nice restaurants and things like that. Sometimes the body can't handle that. We'll talk about that. So, Vishal Mikrach Le'ir, I understand why you shouldn't force somebody to move from a big city to a town. Because in town, you can get everything. People used to living in a big city, everything is available. In, in a town, you don't have everything. Why can't you force her to go from a city, from a town, let's say, into a city? All we talked about, what you're allowed to do is in the same land, in the same within the same country, right? There's like three different, I guess, states, let's say. We'll call them states in Eretz Israel. So you can't force them to move from one state to another state. But within the same state, you can go from a city to a city or from a town to a town, but not the other way around. Now, why not? 
from a town, from a big city to a town, I understand, because in a big city, everything's available. In a small town, it's not, right? I love me, you're across my time. From, from a town to a big city, what's the problem? Why can't you go to a big city? In a big city, everything's available. They got nightlife. They got all kinds of stuff. My time. That's a proof of the rest of the rest How do you know that living in a big town could be, big city can be tough? Shinemar, by Baruch Ha'am, it says, by Baruch Ha'am, the people blessed all the people, Hamisnadbim, who volunteered, Lashev Hasbir Shalayim, to live in Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim, very tzafuk. In a big city, people live on top of one another. Anybody who came like from a place where they had farms and a lot of air, you know, people live on a kibbutz. They don't want to live in the town because here they got plenty of air and space and running around and, and the, the air is good and, you know, there's more room. In town, things are more tzafuf. So it's not necessarily so people used to town life or, or farm life. They didn't, we wouldn't live, necessarily live in a big city. And a big city, maybe they don't want to move to a town because nothing's available there. Shemuel says, Shemuel says, what? What did he say? Aflam, you can't even move from a bad area to a good area. Because a good area tests you. My body, change in diet is the beginning of gastrointestinal problems, right? Because you know, you have, oh, you know, in town, in, in the city, in town, and when we were on the farm, we only had basic food. Now, oh, look, you got all these restaurants, and you start getting sick, start going to these weddings. Cost of the Sefer Ben Sira, it says in the Sefer Ben Sira, the first few, the first four words here are also in Mishle, as he quotes there, call you may on your own. All the days of poor people are tough, are bad days. I mean, what do you mean all the days? Not all their days are poor. You know, Shabbos and Yantif, they get from the Tamkhoi, they get from the soup kitchen or something. You know, they have, sometimes they have good food. No. Like Shmuel just said, we just quoted him above. We said it before that what? Like Shmuel just said that, uh, that you know, changing diet and people each, do, do I have to uh, do I have to explain this to anybody? You ever eat Shabbos food? You know what you feel like on Sunday morning, right? So <laughs> there you go. A change in diet is the beginning of gastro problems. Ben Sira, now Ben Sira adds more. See, it says Kasim Ben Sira. That really part. Those first four words are really in Mishle, but the last, the last, and the next words are really in the Sefer Ben Sira, which is not in the canon, the twenty-four uh, holy books. Ben Sira was like a separate book that came that uh, was later. Ben Sira says uh, he gives a lot of advice. Aflelos. Even not only not only are it called Yemei Ani Ram, not only are the days bad for an Ani when he's no food to eat, even the nights are bad. Why? Bishval Gavin Gako, his roof is at the lowest part. In other words, he's at the lowest part of the of the city or of the mountain. His got his his roof is at the bottom, meaning everybody else's roof leaks onto his, right? Umaram Haram Karmo. And on the his his vineyard is on the mountain, uh, on the mountain, right? Mimat Mimatar Gagam got Mamter um uh, the other roofs leak onto his, and his, um, his, his, his vineyard is at the top of the mountain, meaning all the soil from his vineyard leaks down the mountain and he loses his soil. In other words, he gets everybody else's garbage water on his roof and leaks onto his house, and his vineyard is not in a good spot. It's on a mountaintop, so everything's the soil goes down. So his, his, his days are no good and his nights are not good. Everybody, husbands and wives, can force one another to move up to Eretz Yisrael. My great great grandparents made Aliyah in 1900 from Poland, and she left. They left their seven married children in Poland, and my great great grandfather wanted to make Aliyah. Thank God he did. We have Kevravos and Svas. Everybody else is gone in Poland. We don't have anything. No, 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 Zecher, everything is destroyed, Treblinka and all that stuff, right? So um, he wanted to come up to Eretz Yisrael. She didn't want to go. She wanted to leave her children. Her brother was the Rebbe, was the Radomska Rebbe, my brother Rebbe. So she took her, so he took her to a Din Torah to her own brother, effectively. I mean, I don't want to talk about recusing himself, whatever, but now they ask her official Shaila, but he said, the husband goes, to go to Eretz Yisrael, you have to go to Eretz Yisrael. Now we're gonna we're, we're gonna ignore the toasts over here. The famous toast was here um, that uh, uh, that uh, the third toast here is the famous toast of uh, Rabbeinu Chaim, who says that you know when things when the roads are dangerous, we can't go to Eretz Yisrael today, so the rules don't apply, right? But this in our time, the toasts wouldn't be saying this, right? Eli Bismanaze says you know because it's a sakana, you can't go to Eretz Yisrael; that is dangerous. Now it's not such a sakana unless you consider the El Al food. You know, dangerous to your life. You know, it's not such a sakana to come there and stroll today. So everybody can force one. So here, 
my great great grandfather forced his wife to come on Aliyah, and they and they lived here and they died here. Come on, Eretz Yisrael, ain't a come on seeing. But no, but you can't. Anybody can force, but you can't leave. Let's say one party wants to leave. One of the spouses wants to leave Israel and move to America, Chicago, or someplace. So you can't force them. Now, what do you mean can't force them? That means that uh, if it's if if the wife wants to move back to Chicago and the husband doesn't want, he can divorce her without giving her exhibit. And if she and if she wants if she wants to stay in Arizona and he wants to leave, then she can force him to give her exhibit. The best will force him to give her, to give her again an exhibit. So you can force people to move there. So you can't force them to move out. In in Eretz Yisrael itself, if they want to move through Shalim, you can force them through Shalim because that's a higher kedushin. You can't force them out. Whether it's men or a woman, not like we normally think, the husband can force the wife. No, the wife not can force a the wife. for the Mishnah before that says big cities versus small cities. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Oh, but, uh, when you talk about Yushalayim verse, are you talking about the Yushalayim yeah. aspect? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, not, not, I guess Yushalayim could be an exception to that. That's a good Probably point. But Yushalayim could be an exception to that because Yushalayim is a higher Kanusha. We're talking yeah. about in yeah. general, the, the cities that we're talking about, cities and, and towns, probably was not, not including Yushalayim. So mm-hmm. it shouldn't be a secret, right? Good point. So let's say he married somebody in Eretz Yisrael. Now, and the Girsha bears any divorce in Eretz Yisrael. So obviously, Nelson Moses says, obviously, you have to give her um, Israeli food, Israeli money. What money do you use? What, what denomination? Like, for example, that, let's say the Ksuba says 200 today, right? Is it 200 shekels or 200 dollars? The dollar's worth more than the shekel, usually for a while, a little bit longer won't be. But right now, the dollar's still worth more than the shekel. So do you have to, so if, if everything took place in Israel, obviously, you give them from the land of Israel, shekels. Nasi Shabbat, let's say he married a woman in Eretz Yisrael, but Gishri, he married, and he divorced her in Kaput, Kaput was in Asia Minor somewhere, some other place outside of Israel, and they had, their money was worth more. Rashi says they had larger coins. The same, the same number of coins would give you a lot more value because their coins were bigger and worth more money. So what do you do? It's not some Eretz Yisrael. You still can give Eretz Yisrael money. Now, you might say, because the commitment was made in Eretz Yisrael, but the Gemara then says, no, the Mishnah says, Nasi Shabbat, the other way around. Let's say he married in Kaput, Kia. Where the, the coins were bigger, but he didn't say the Gersh of Eretz Yisrael, still knows the Messiah can give her from, from Eretz Yisrael money, right? Even though he married her in Kaputkia, that's where the Ksuba was, he can give her Eretz Yisrael. Shimon says no, Shimon Shim Liel says no, no, it's not Kaputkia. You go where the Shibud was made. If they if they got married in Kaputkia, where they had larger coins, you got to give her those coins. We'll see what the Machlokas is in the Gemara. Now, she's with Kaputkia, so let's say he married her and divorced her in Kaputkia, then obviously everybody agrees not the Kaputkia there because everything was done in that land. How come on, so the mission is how come on, everybody can force you, uh, somebody else to move up there to Israel? Let's see, you know, what is that called? What does it include? Let's see, you had an Evid Ivri. An Evid Kanani goes without saying, an Evid Kanani is like your animals and they belong to you, right? But let's say an Evid Ivri, who's only Meshubid, he, he's like uh, an indentured, indentured uh, uh, you know, servant who's got to work for you for X number of years. He can also, you can force him to go up there to Israel too. Well, so now there is there's uh, some some uh, some um, authors had in the mission itself it says avodim that you could hakomal include the avodim so lamanda tani avodim if you learn avodim but favorish in the mishnah so what does hakol come to include lasui man lasui then avay yafel and avay ara so here it says here Rumi this is the answer to your point that that you can go up there to show even from a night you lived in a nice uh, city in Rome or Paris or someplace or New York a nice area. You could even move it to a bad area in Eretz Yisrael. We see the same thing. We'll see that answer in the British line in a minute. You can't force them out. Let's say an, a, a slave ran away to Eretz, to, to, to Eretz Yisrael, right? You can't force him out. Even, even that, you can't force anybody. Not only a husband or wife. You can't even force an Evid, an Evid out. That means that we tell them, listen, Zavnei Hacha, sell them here in Israel. Vazil, and then you go home. If you want to go back to Chutz Laaretz, and your Evid ran away, so okay, you could stay in Chutz or stay there, but your Evid ran to Eretz Yisrael, you can't force them out, you have to sell them, and that's it. Why? Mishim Mishim is Eretz because we want more people living in Israel. Right, Zavnei. And when you sell them, presume we're talking about even an Evid Kanani, right? Because you can't sell an Evid every. So, so we're talking about even a Kanani. That's also Yeshiva Eretz Yisrael. He's a half a Jew. How come on Yushalayim, Masuyim, I was in the Bishalayim, Masuyim, and the Bayah, and the Bayah, here you go. Even from a nicer area to a worse area, even though we said before you can't do that in the three, even within the three lands, but in Yushalayim you can. Masuyim, and the Bayah, even for a worse area. Banakom, Matsin, can't take Malasim, Malasim, and the Bayah, and the Bayah, 
You can't take him out from your shalom, even from a bad area to a nicer area outside of your shalom. You can't do it. I had a ton of ratio. Amos seeing ton of safe and not me. Amos seeing. Amos seeing is obvious, really, right? If you can force somebody yeah. up from line from a nice area to a bad area, certainly you can't force them out from a bad area to a nice area. But that's as mentioned because we had Amos seeing from Eretz Yisrael, so we said also Amos seeing from your shalom. Ton of Who am I last? Amos Shalos. Let's say he says I want to go up to Israel, and she says I don't want to go, like happened with my great grand great great grandparents. Kofun Shalos is you force her to go up. The Imlav, if not Tesi Boksuba, he can force her out where he has a fair Ksuba. Because he wants to do the mitzvah of Isha Barak Sashrol and she doesn't want to, so he can divorce her without a ksuba. He omers lots of shit. She wants to go up, but who omers shalom? He says, I don't want to. Kofun of shalom, we force him to be in love, and if he doesn't want to, Yotzin, he has to force her and give her the ksuba. She wants to make Aliyah, and he doesn't want to. He can, she can force him either give me a divorce and pay me. He omers lots of she wants to leave it, so who omers shalom? He says, I don't want to go out. Again, kofun of shalom, you force her out to be in love, takes the ksuba, because he, he can't, she can't force him to go back to Chicago. Who Omer Lutz says, he says, I want to go back to Chicago, but he Omer Shalom says, and she doesn't want to. Kofano, so we force him, Shalom, we force him to stay in love. And if he, if he wants to go, Yosef, he has to force her and give it. He, you can, he has to give her a get, and, and he can't force her out of the country. He has to give her a get and pay the ksuba. No, so Isha. So now he says, let's understand something. You get, we seem to have a, a steer, Hagu Fakasha. Tony, we said, no, so Isha, but if you married someone there, it's Shalom, but and you any divorce and quick, you know, so must you give her marriage to Shalom money. Why? Presumably, why? Because you go, that was the deal was made. The sheep, but the obligation was when they got married, the Ksuba in Eretz Yisrael. Alma Basa Shibuda, Aslan, you go according to the original obligation. Where was the lien? When we got married, we got married in Eretz Yisrael, even though we got divorced in Kaputkia, but the original obligation was Eretz Yisrael. You give her the money of Eretz Yisrael, the cheaper money. So you go according to the sheep, according to the original obligation. Aim is safe, but the safest is not if you got married in Kaputkia, but you're married in divorce Eretz Yisrael. Also, the Tanakhama said, no, so must you give him Eretz Yisrael. You seem to go the coolly each way. Alma, Basu Gavainos, and you go according to where the collection was, where it's cheaper in Israel, where the money is worth less. Alma Rabba, Mikulik Ksuba Kanaka. This is one of the coolest of Ksuba. Why? Why Ksuba? Ksuba's Rabbanan, like we hold the Maisa, Ksuba's Rabbanan. And the rabbis made that cooler, that Eretz Yisrael has greater Kedusha, so you, the, the husband can get away with paying her with Eretz Yisrael money, whether he married her in Eretz Yisrael or whether he married her in Kaputkia and got divorced her. So as long as one of them was in Israel, he can give her Israeli money. Shemuel says, no, you have to give her a Kaputkia. If they got married in Kaputkia, he has to give that. Why? Because of the rice. He also it was the rice. It's Minatora, meaning the obligation was, it's Minatora. So if he had an obligation to give her the larger denomination of Kaputkia money, because uh, that's where they got married, you go with that. What about a regular guy? Ruvain says to Shimon, you owe me money. Kosovo, Babel, it says it was in Babel, you must get a payment with Babylonian money, because that was written in the Shtar, in the IOU, right? Kosovo, it says Eretz Yisrael, that you use Israeli money. Kosovo, Stam, it didn't say, the Bob, it didn't say Babel or Eretz Yisrael, just as an IOU, it didn't say, it didn't, it wasn't, it didn't have the place, right? It didn't have the date line in there. So Kosovo, uh, uh, Kosovo, Stam, if it was tried, if you collected it in Babel, you collect it, you use must use Babylonian money. If it came for collection in Israel, Magbe must Israel. Kosovo Kesef Stam. Let's say it just said, I'm paying you with uh, silver money. Kosovo Kesef Stam didn't say what kind of money. Mashi Yurtsa Lova Magbe. He can give him with the Lova, whatever the Lova wants him, he can pay him. He can pay him with all kinds. It didn't say, Rashi says, if it's a cella or a dinner or a punya, all kinds of uh, silver money. Uh, Masha and came Ksuba as opposed to Ksuba. Now, what do we mean, Josh and came Ksuba? Well, how is an IOU different than Ksuba? In which is what's the case of going on? I am Rab Mashasha Arasha on the first part. On the first part that we said that what that uh, if it, yeah, if you have an IOU, if it says Babel, you collect it with Mamani Babel. If it says Eretz Yisrael, like Eretz Yisrael, well, here he says Masha and came Ksuba by Ksuba. We don't go by what's written in there. La Pukhara Mashem Yulil, the Mashem Yulil, the Mashem Yulil says. If it was written in there, that was what the original deal was, where the obligation was made. He got married in Kaputka, or got married in Israel. You go with that. No, when it comes to civil, we're saying nothing. And IOU works that way. But when it comes to a marriage, we say no. Even if it says there, Bavel, but he divorced her, let's say, in Eretz Israel, you can use the Eretz Israel money. You can always use the cheaper money, uh, even if it's Eretz Israel, whether the obligation was made there or the collection was made there. Kosovo Kesef Stam, Mashi Yitzlov, you can pay him any love. Mashi Yitzlov, and they can collect pay any kind of money. Because he didn't say what coin. He didn't say uh, he didn't say silver dinners or silver cellars. He didn't say uh, anything. He can pay him with any coins that he wants. Amen Asra, 
Maybe it's uh, not even coins. Maybe it's just, you know, paying with uh, chips of, sil of, of silver, just silver metal. On the list of Sibig it says coin, it says Bambea, it says some kind of coin. It didn't say which coin. Maybe it means small amounts of money. Now, Preeti, usually Rosh is where the Choshis is copper money, or it could be, you know, silver money with a value of Preeti. Or a Papa Preeti, the Kaspal Abish, people don't make. Uh, uh, what they call prutos out of silver. They made them out of the choshes, and therefore, since it says kesef, kesef means presumably silver. The way Rashi is mash, it's not so much like that's the answer, because Rashi says the toma, the toma sheet, or the choshes, or kesef shava, may have prutos, prutos, but they, people don't talk about prutos, because prutos are only usually in the choshes. And since you use Lashon of kesef, it means some, some sort of silver coins. Tanar bana, la'olam yadon emeritz Yisrael, 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 even a city which is mostly Yisrael, don't live in even if it's mostly a Jewish town. So living in New York or living in South Florida, even if there's mostly Jews there, you shouldn't live there. If you live in Eretz Yisrael, it's as if you have a God. If you live in Chutzlar, it's as if you don't have a God. I'm going to give you Eretz Kanan. I'm giving you Eretz Yisrael so that now, then I will be a God for you. Meaning in Eretz Yisrael, I'm a God for you. If you're outside of Eretz Yisrael, it's as if I'm not your God. Is it really true that if you don't live in Eretz Yisrael, you don't have a God? If you live in Eretz Yisrael, I'm going to be your God. If I don't live in Eretz Yisrael, if you don't live in Eretz Yisrael, I'm not going to be God. If you live in Chutzlar, it's, you don't have a God. Of course, you could be Jewish and you could do most of the mitzvahs, right? But if you live in Chutzlar, it's as if you're over at Chavit, Ke'ilu over at Chavit, Bechem B'david over, this is by David. Uh, David said when he had to leave Eretz Yisrael and he had to go to uh, the Melz Moab El Achish, it says, Ki Gershuni, shh, Ki Gershuni Ayom, they, they chased me out today, me estapach benachlas, benachlas, uh, benachlas Hashem, they chased me out of, um, uh, uh, from cleaving to the, uh, the inheritance of God, Lamor, Leich avod Elohim achrim, go serve another God. Chimi amal lo David leich avod Elohim achrim. Did somebody tell David to go worship another God? El lo melacha kol adar bechutzlar. It's the teacher. If you live in chutzlar, it's kilo. It comes as if you're worshiping another God. Rav Zera, just like Rav Zera, Mishdamet Nei Rav Yehuda. Rav Zera was avoiding his Rebbe Rav Yehuda. The boy of Messi Eretz Yisrael. Rav Zera eventually did come up to Eretz Yisrael. Remember, he prayed that he should forget all the all his Torah uh, chutzlar, and he. Um, uh, he, he tried to avoid Rabbi Yudah because Rabbi Yudah was, was trying to discourage him from going to Eretz Yisrael. That's the problem. Because that's the rabbis themselves want to discourage you from making Aliyah. Rabbi Zayar wanted to make Aliyah, and um, uh, he wanted to go. He wanted to make go up to Eretz Yisrael, and his Rebbe, Rabbi Yudah, didn't want him to go. Dom Rabbi Yudah, Rabbi Yudah said, "Kol ola mi Bavel Eretz Yisrael over Vasei." Whoever goes up from Bavel to Eretz Yisrael is over Vasei. Shemar Bavel Yivot says. You will go to Babel, but show me you. I don't fuck you. You're going to stay there. I don't mean until I was until I'm day. I'm going to rem, uh, remember you knew Mashem. So Rabbi Yehuda quoted that post to say, it's supposed to say in Babel, don't make Aliyah. But if they wanted to make Aliyah, we'll see this discussion. We'll continue this discussion tomorrow, Mitzvah Shem, when we uh, learn at the usual time, even though it's Rosh Chodesh. So we're going to have to rush wow. through it up, right? Rush it up. Rosh Chodesh next to this. Have a good day, everybody. Call to. Thank Kodesh. you, Kodesh.